everyone. Welcome to the Oakley Roots YouTube channel. Today's tutorial is one that I have been so excited about for months. I actually saw a picture of this bag in one of the fabric Facebook groups I'm in. I had no idea who the designer was. I scoured the internet trying to find the pattern. I actually found her when I was working on a separate video for one of her bags. So it was just fortuitous how we came together. So besides that, finding the pattern, making the bag, and then all these other levels of excitement that I will share with you in just a moment. This video is going to be one of my favorites. I can already tell, it's going to be one of my favorites. So today's tutorial is for the Beauty Makeup Bag by Sewn Ideas. Look at the shape of this beautiful bag. Ugh. Okay, so let's just take a look at this. First of all, we have this hard outer shell. You can see it doesn't squish. It's going to keep its shape. You open that up and there is a pouch on the inside. This pouch, however, can come out. Velcro! <laughs> I love that we have a Velcro removable pouch so you can just get that out of the way if you need to. We'll look at that in just a second. On the inside here, we have a clear pocket with a zipper. And then we have a few skinnier pockets for you to put your makeup brushes, pencils, whatever you need. So this is a beautiful makeup bag. This is the outer shell case. On the inside of the bag, we just have this adorable zip pouch. It has a waterproof lining on the inside, cute little zipper up top, beautiful hardware on the side so you can just take this out, carry it wherever you need to take it. I absolutely love this beauty bag. So you know what I'm gonna do just to kind of show you how it looks in the wild? <laughs> I'm going to fill it all up with the makeup that I just used for this. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Okay, so now this is completely chock full of all of the makeup that I used for today's tutorial. Do not judge me on how much makeup it takes for this, okay? I know it's, it's a little overboard, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like just to help you visualize the pattern in your own home. So in this pouch here, I have everything. I have makeup brushes, eye powders, sponges, bronzers, all the things. This thing is pretty full and it can still hold quite a bit more. On the inside here, I have my palette. And then on the left, I have brushes and pencils, my lip gloss, my mascara. So this is such a fun and creative way to store your makeup, either on your counter in your bathroom or when you're traveling. I absolutely love this beauty makeup bag. However, I think we can use it for more things than just makeup, right? I mean, that's what we do. We, we see the purpose, but then we repurpose it. We DIY something different, right? So in today's tutorial, I'll be making the exact same bag, but with the intended use as like a children's craft bag because this shape is just too cool. You know kids are gonna love this shape. So before we get started, let me just remind you that there are timestamps for every single step of this tutorial. Down in the comment section is the first comment at the very top, it's from me. I'll have every single step of this tutorial listed down there. Just click on the number right next to it and I'll take you straight there in the video. This bag has a lot of steps. There are a lot to it. I would not say this is a challenging bag though. I really wouldn't. I, I, think, I think you're gonna love this bag. I, I know you're gonna love this bag but I think it's easier than it looks, in my opinion. I mean, when I first saw this pattern, I thought, okay, <laughs> you know what, let's just try it. And if it doesn't work out, we'll do like a simple zip pouch or something like that instead for the tutorial. Cause I, I honestly wasn't sure if I was gonna be successful with this bag and be able to show you how to make it. Totally, so much easier than you think. First, I just wanna let you know, you don't birth this at all. You build all of this as like a big old piece of paper and then you bind around it. Don't, don't worry about the binding. Please, please try the binding. Please try the binding. I, I, it's so beautiful. While I was working on this bag, I actually found out that one of my favorite sewists in the Facebook community is hosting a sew along for this exact bag for this same bag. So if you are watching this video in July of 2020, maybe early August of 2020, you can partake in a sew along for this bag. If you join the Backstitch Backroom Facebook group, I will have a link for that down in the description of this video. If you join that Facebook group, Alex will be hosting a sew along for this bag. So that means she's gonna show you one step 
you're going to complete that step. You're going to post photos where she tells you to post them and you will be entered in for a chance to win prizes with backstitch fabrics. And we all know how much I love backstitch fabrics in this in this online community, right? You you are all you are all well aware of backstitch fabrics. So she will be doing it day by day, step by step. She will have her own video tutorial. So if there's just some techniques you're not quite getting, check out Alex's videos because she's gonna show you some other tips and tricks. So I am so excited for this. You have a lot of resources here. You have opportunities to win stuff while you're making this beautiful bag. I cannot wait to see your versions. Please make sure you post them on social media if you have the ability to. Please make sure you tag me. I'm at Oakler over on Facebook and on Instagram. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, shout outs, comments, anything like that, leave them down in the comment section of this video. All right, let's get started. So you can see this bag is broken up into a few different sections. We have this outer shell and then we have this inner bag. So let's take out the inner bag. The inner bag just has an outer panel and a lining panel. The outer shell has lining fabric on the inside and then the exterior fabric and then you can have a vinyl base if you'd like. Since we have so many different pieces like this, I feel like this makes this a great scrappy project. You can have different fabric for the inside bag, different fabric for the lining, different pieces of the lining. You can mix up the exterior fabric. So in this first bag, I use two main fabrics, an outer fabric on the inside pouch and the exterior shell and the lining fabric all around and then a little bit of vinyl. In today's tutorial, I'm actually gonna be using a lot of different fabrics for these different pieces. The pattern calls for 5 eighths of a yard of outer fabric. I'm going to mix this up just a little bit. I'm going to use a couple patterns for the outer fabric of the shell of the bag. I'm going to use this fun slinky dog print for the pouch. And then I'm going to incorporate some vinyl just for the base and the handle of the bag. Next we have the lining. I'm actually going to use the same fabric for all of the lining in the bag. You're going to need 3 quarters of a yard of cotton woven fabric for that. You're also going to need about half of a yard of contrasting fabric for your binding. I like to use fabric that has a small print on it that's very repetitive. I also like to make sure I use fabric that I don't see myself using on a lot of other projects. This is great for binding because you don't see a lot of it, you'll just see a little bit of the pop of color. So now let's talk interfacing. First, I have my Pellon SF101. This is gonna be applied to pretty much all of the pieces of fabric except vinyl. One of you guys gave me a great tip and said to cut the pattern pieces out of the SF101 first and then apply those to my fabric and then cut the fabric out. I actually did that for today's tutorial and for the first bag. That is a great, great tip so that you can reduce waste of your interfacing. Since my SF101 is 20 inches wide, I need about two and a quarter yards of this. Next up is our fusible fleece. We don't actually need a lot of this. We just need about three quarters of a yard. I am using this fusible Thermalam Plus, so this is TP971F. Honestly, I use a lot of different fusible fleeces and I don't notice that much of a difference for bag making specifically, but I do really like this Thermalam. It fuses very well. And finally, you're gonna want some Pellon Peltex. This is at 71F. You can see this is almost like cardboard. It's very stiff. This is what's going to give the firmness on the core of your bag so that it just stays perfectly upright. Definitely don't skip this step. This The Peltex is necessary. All right, so now let's talk clear vinyl. This is another area where I'm kind of switching it up. I have this huge roll here of this 10 gauge clear vinyl. Now you can cut this clear vinyl out and sew it on to all of the recommended pieces. However, I found that to be very difficult even with a silicone presser foot. So instead of sewing on the vinyl to the lining panels, I'm actually gonna be using heat and bond today. This is great, you just cut out the pieces of your heat and bond using your pattern pieces, iron it on, and now you have pretty much the same effect with a lot less work. I'm gonna show you how to do this in the tutorial. There's one pattern piece you definitely don't wanna do this on because it's for a clear pocket. For that clear pocket, I found some of this really cool blue clear vinyl that I'm gonna use in today's tutorial. I will have links for all of this down in the description of the video. All right, let's talk hardware now. You're going to need two nylon zippers, each 10 inches long or longer. I'm gonna be using this beautiful zipper tape today, so since I'm using a nice long zipper tape, I just need two zippers to go with it. 
Next, you're gonna need two sets of magnetic snaps. I like to buy these off of Amazon. They're very inexpensive. You can also find some really, really gorgeous options on hardware stores. I will have links for those down in the description. Next, you're gonna need your key fob hardware. Now this is for that wristlet that goes on that middle pouch. So you can use something like this. You're gonna to need to make sure you have this type of clamp here. I'll have the link for this down in the description of the video. Or we can try a D-ring and a swivel hook. So I'm gonna show you how to use both of these today. I'm gonna to just make two different straps just to show you. Next is your Velcro. This is the hook and loop fastener. Now again, I'll have a link for this. This is gonna be three quarters of an inch wide. This is great to work with because it does not have adhesive on it. It's so in, which means your sewing machine can sew over it without it gunking up your needle. I will be adding four purse feet onto the bottom of the bag, but that's totally optional. All right, here's some of the other stuff. Today I'm gonna to be sewing on my Juki TL2010Q. I'll be using this Guterman Mara 70 thread. I really like the way this looks because it's a little bit beefier. Also, I've learned that when I use this thread, I do not have skip stitches at all. So if you're struggling with that and you're using Orville thread, why don't you try giving this a try and let me know if that helps. Next, I always have my seam ripper and my stiletto on hand. I'll be using this a lot today. This quarter inch double-sided tape from Dritz is extremely helpful for many steps. I'll be using a universal 8012 Schmetz needle. I just wanted to show you my presser foot because I'll be working with a lot of vinyl. I coated it with a piece of scotch tape. I just cut a slit where the needle goes up and down and that works actually really, really well. So if you don't have access to a silicone presser foot, try this out. I've had a lot of success with this in the previous bag. Now I know a lot of you guys are dreading this, but we will be doing some hand stitching today. I know that there are ways to attach the binding using a machine. I am no good at that. I will be showing you what I know if you have any suggestions for other videos showing you a great way to attach binding to a bag using the sewing machine, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section. I, however, will be showing you how to do it using some hand stitch clover needles. And when hand stitching, always have a leather thimble to put on your finger and protect it. Just a quick note here. If you're going to be using this iron on vinyl for your brush flap, which goes inside the bag, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you cut this out in a very specific way. So this is using pattern piece number five. Take your clear adhesive vinyl with the paper side, which is gonna end up being the wrong side of the vinyl, right side up, grab your pattern piece and trace your pattern piece with the pattern piece right side up, so text side up on the back of your vinyl. We're gonna be matching this up with one of the pattern pieces in our lining, and we wanna make sure we adhere it to the right one. So I just grab any sort of pen, trace it out, and then cut out on that line just like that. And this will make sure that when I'm applying it to my lining piece in the next step, I apply it to the right one. So as you can see, there are a lot of pattern pieces in this bag. I'm gonna stick with, this is not a very challenging bag to sew, but give yourself a day to cut out everything and interface it. It's just a lot of pieces. Once you have all that done, go on to the next day, sew it up the next day. That's my suggestion. So let's talk about interfacing our exterior panel, which is the shell of the bag. This is pattern piece number one. As you can see, I'm using these beautiful panels today for the exterior of the bag. Like I said, I'm making a crafty version. This is not a makeup bag version. You can use it however you want, honestly. But first, what you're gonna wanna do is interface your fabric with the SF-101. Now, in this first version, this is actually cotton lycra. So this is that like jersey feeling material, that knit material that you would use for clothing. But I didn't have a woven version of this. This works beautifully. So if you have cotton lycra, do not be afraid to use it here. Just make sure you cut out your SF-101 pieces first, fuse them onto your cotton lycra, and then cut out your pattern piece for your cotton lycra using that SF-101 as your template. It works beautifully. So you can see I already adhered the SF-101 to my cotton woven panels here. The next step will be to apply the fusible fleece, and then after the fusible fleece, we'll apply the Peltex. Now, I've struggled with fusible fleece before, but I think I have it figured out now. Take your exterior panel and lay it right side down. So you have the SF-101 side up, grab your fusible fleece and lay it glue side, so rough side down, and just line it up over 
your panel. Flip the whole unit up so that you have the right side of your fabric right side up. Now grab your iron and now using steam, just move it around over that panel. I find the combination of moving the iron and the steam really helps set the glue and prevents any of that crinkling or warping. It could also be that Thermalam is much better fusible fleece for bags because I don't have a problem with it. So you just wanna go all the way around just like that. Now, before we adhere the Peltex to the back of this, we wanna make sure it's the right size. On the template for piece one, you can see there's this dashed line right here. It says cutting line for Peltex. So you can see my Peltex piece is too long. I still need to trim off this bottom line. So what I do is I just measure what that distance is using my ruler and that template. And then I'll go ahead and cut it off the bottom of my piece. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and do that for the other piece of Peltex while we're here. So now we need to apply our Peltex to the back of our outer panel. Remember, this is still pattern piece number one. So grab your outer panel that has the fusible fleece and lay it right side down. Grab your Peltex and line it up with the top in the sides so you should have that nice gap on the bottom just get it lined up pretty well you should find that the grittiness of the glue on the peltex kind of locks itself into that fleecy felt on the back of your fusible fleece flip the whole unit right side up peltex is another one of those interfacings that work best if you fuse it from the right side of the fabric using steam Okay, so now you should have this nice sandwich of cotton woven, SF-101, fusible fleece, and then your Peltex. Go ahead and repeat this for the other exterior outer panel, pattern piece number one. Once you have both of your exterior interfacing sandwiches all built, go ahead and put these to the side. Also, since we're just getting started, I do highly recommend you print out these gridded pattern pieces and keep them clipped to your units as you're sewing. It's going to help you so, so much. I always have these little hair clips clipped to my pattern pieces with the pattern piece number on it just so I don't forget what I need to use when. Next, grab your exterior pattern piece number two. This should already have the SF-101 or cotton woven, whatever you're using for your woven interfacing. It should already be applied to your fabric. Again, you can use cotton lycra here, canvas, quilt cotton, whatever you want. We're now going to adhere our fusible fleece to this piece. So we're gonna do this in the same way we did with pattern piece number one. Go ahead and lay your quilt cotton piece right side down, grab your fusible fleece, lay it gritty side down on top of the back of your exterior panel, rotate the whole unit right side up, make sure it's laid out nicely, and then grab your iron and using a good amount of steam, just go over the entire unit all right, once you have your fusible fleece attached to one of your exterior number two units, go ahead and repeat that process for the other number two pattern piece. All right, go ahead and clip on your tag and put pattern piece number two to the side. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how I attach this fusible clear vinyl to my lining pieces. Remember, this step is entirely optional. You can use the clear vinyl that you sew onto these pieces, or you can just skip this step entirely. You don't even need to add any sort of vinyl to these pieces. If you are a newer sewer, just skip this. It might be more of a headache. You could also use waterproof canvas for your lining pieces. That would work actually really, really well in this pattern because we don't have a lot of turning in and out. Lots of options for the lining. So let's first work with pattern piece number one. I'm going to grab one of my lining pieces for pattern piece number one and one of my cuts of adhesive vinyl now you can see there's a shiny side to this and then that gridded paper side what we're going to do is we're going to pull off the paper and just pull it off nice and gentle it's okay if your vinyl crinkles a little bit so now i have that kind of stickier side where the paper was i want to lay that down onto the right side of my vinyl now you'll see it's not super sticky. So if you have to lift it up, move it around, that's no big deal. All right, once you have it covering your lining panel, grab a scrap piece of fabric and we're gonna lay this fabric over the vinyl just like that. Now take your iron and no steam, run it over that fabric. And what we're doing is we're just melting that vinyl onto our lining panel. 
The instructions for my specific adhesive vinyl says to use medium heat. I have mine on high heat, but it's a cordless iron, so I don't, I don't think it get that hot. You can see I'm just kind of moving it quickly over the entire section where I know that vinyl is. If you have to, go ahead and lift up your fabric and look. But it's actually very, very simple to do this. Okay, and then you can pick it up, take a look at it. When it's hot, it's gonna be a little bit more gooey, so you can give it a moment to cool off. But yeah, that's how I add the clear vinyl onto my lining pieces. So now I'm gonna continue applying the clear adhesive vinyl to pattern pieces one, two, and three. Remember, this is all lining pieces. Okay, so now we're gonna be a little bit of a rebel. Only if you're using the iron-on vinyl. Grab your lining pattern piece number five and grab your iron-on vinyl pattern piece number five. In the pattern, she suggests waiting until later to do this step, and I completely understand why it's very easy to mess this up now. This is for your brush flap. So when these two pieces are wrong sides together, just like this later in the pattern, it's going to line up with the top of your lining along the curved edge. So when you have your piece like this, it's gonna curve up to the top left, meaning this piece right here on the bottom will be the part that needs to have the vinyl. I know this can be a little confusing, which is why I suggested you cut your vinyl out a certain way. You're going to find the piece that matches up with that iron-on vinyl exactly, just like this. This will ensure that when you attach this later, you have the right side with the vinyl on it facing down over your brushes just like this. I know it's a little confusing. I just have to show you, I just made another one with the vinyl on the wrong side. So let's do this right. Let's go ahead and attach this to our lining piece the same way we attached the clear vinyl on the other units. So this should be what it looks like now. Your adhesive clear vinyl should be pressed on to the lining piece that has the little bump that goes up and to the right, just like that. So that way, whenever they're wrong sides together later in the pattern and we place it on our lining piece, it goes up like this with the non-vinyl side fabric side up and the vinyl side down. If you're using sew on clear vinyl, you do not have to worry about this at all because that can be used in either direction. If you're using the iron on vinyl though, you do need to pay attention to which piece this goes on for your pattern piece number fives. So now we're gonna work on the brush holder and brush flap. Grab one of your pattern piece number one lining panels and lay it right side up and rotate it so that the straight edge is on the left. Grab your pattern piece number four lining piece and we're going to fold this piece wrong sides together, matching up that curved edge. And then just press along that folded edge on the bottom. You can use an iron here to press this down. Once you have this pressed and folded in half, let's just go ahead and top stitch along this folded edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So since we are just starting our first stitches, make sure your bobbin thread is the same color as your top thread. You can see in this first bag, my top thread was this white and my bobbin thread was this red. Don't do that. Make sure they're the same color. Now grab your pattern piece number one. Again, right side up, straight edge on the left. Grab that pocket unit you just top stitched and we're just gonna line it up on the bottom left corner of pattern piece number one. You should see it lines up on the straight edge and then the curved edge lines up as well. Grab some clips and just clip it in place. All right, so now we're just gonna sew along this bottom and left clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. We're just holding it in place right now. All right, once you have that attached, let's go ahead and mark our lines for the brush holder. Now you can mix this up however you want. If you want a whole bunch of skinny lines for a bunch of different pencils, do that. If you wanna keep this as just one big pocket, you can skip this entirely. I'm gonna go with the measurements she suggests. So we're gonna be measuring from the left straight edge in. We're just gonna be doing two stitches, but this is one of those great, great patterns that you can adjust however you need based on what you're making it for. So I'm just using this Fonz and Porter chalk pencil to do markings. All right, now we're just gonna go back to the sewing machine and top stitch over my marked lines. She gives a great suggestion here to start on the bottom with the raw edge, go up along your line, stop at the top, 
and then just go right back down. This gives you a nice back stitch at the top and really strengthens that seam. So no matter who's using it and what they're putting in it, it's gonna stay in place. All right, you can go ahead and put this to the side for just a minute. So now grab both of your pattern piece number fives for the brush flap and lay them right sides together. They should match up perfectly. And now we're gonna go ahead and clip along these sh three straight edges. Now let's take this to the sewing machine and sew along our clipped edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have your panel sewn together, you can go ahead and just clip down those corners. Make sure you're not clipping the stitches. We're just getting close to it. And then she suggests you can go ahead and clip diagonally parallel to those clipped corners towards the stitches. This will just make sure we have as pointy of a corner as possible. Now flip the whole unit right side out. I like to use my purple thing to get into those corners. Just be very gentle, you can rip those stitches. All right, now just push out the straight edges of your seam so we can get this nice and straight. And now you can take this to your iron and just give it a good press. If you already applied your vinyl like I did, just make sure you don't press on that side, press on the fabric side. So now just to keep this nice and flat and so it doesn't get mushed around too much, I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm just going to top stitch along all four edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, once you have this all top stitched on, you can apply this to our pattern piece number one. We're gonna measure in from that left straight edge, three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna line up my ruler on the three quarters of an inch mark right along that left edge. And then I can just slide my brush flap on to match up with that top curved edge. If it's not exact, don't worry about it, it's okay. Go ahead and clip this in place. And now let's just sew along that top curved pinned edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. If you find that your top edge is just a little off like mine is, that's not a big deal. Just go ahead and trim that down so it doesn't confuse you later. All right, now we're gonna add the band that goes right here that's gonna hold our magnets. So grab one of your top band outer fabric pieces. And what we wanna do is fold this wrong sides together along that long edge, just like that. You can go ahead and press this with your iron if you'd like. So bring back your pattern piece number one that has that brush holder we just put on. And we're going to line up that folded top band along the right curved edge, just like this. It should line up perfectly. And it's gonna go over that brush pocket on the bottom. So you can see this is how we're gonna close up that pocket. Grab some clips and just clip along this entire curved edge. So now we're gonna sew along this entire top band, the clipped edge and this straight edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So you should start seeing this all come together. You have this beautiful flap with your brushes. It's looking good. So now take your unit right side up and grab your template for that top band. Line it up along that curved edge. And we're gonna mark placements for our magnets. So you can see I cut out the holes that are in that pattern piece. I'm gonna grab one of the washers from my magnet and just center it in that hole, just like this. And then I'm going to draw straight lines in the long oval units of that washer. Do the same on the other hole. There we go. So that's where my magnets are gonna go. Now, before I install these, I always forget to add bag labels to my projects. So we're gonna try to not forget this time. I'm gonna add my bag label right here in between these magnets. I don't know if that's the best place for it, but that's where I'm gonna put it today. So I'm just gonna push this down on here to help hold it in place. I'm gonna grab some double-sided tape and just tape it down. I have a link down in the description of where I have my bag labels made. 
and a coupon code as well. All right, so before I add the magnets, I'm just gonna go top stitch this label down real quick at an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around. Okay, let's add some magnets. Grab your seam ripper and just rip along those marked lines. Go nice and slow, because you don't need this to be bigger than that. It's actually better if they're a little on the tight side then loose. Grab two of your one inch square Peltex pieces. And just like we did before, we're gonna trace those long oval marks in the center of those Peltex pieces. This is just gonna help add a little bit more stabilization to these magnets so that as we open and close the bag, we don't start ripping on the fabric. So just like before, very, very slowly and gently cut those marks. Grab your two female magnetic snap pieces and insert them through the right side of your lining panel. Flip your unit wrong side up. Grab your two pierced Peltex pieces and insert those over those prongs. And then last, add a washer on top of that entire sandwich. And then pull those prongs away from one another. You can use pliers here if that's easier. Sometimes these things are hard to press. So now you should have your magnetic snaps attached to one side of your lining piece. Go ahead and put this to the side and let's work on the other side. So grab your clear vinyl. You can see I actually cut out two pieces here. This is just the standard clear vinyl. And here is that blue clear vinyl. And you know, when you have the choice, go crazy. <laughs> so we're gonna use the blue one. So grab your clear vinyl and just put this to the side while we prep that top strip. Take your top strap and lay it wrong side up. Fold the entire strap in half along the long edge and then just press it with your iron. You can open up that fold and then press those long raw edges in to meet that midpoint press. Do this with both sides and then you can fold it back in half so you have this nice skinny strip that has no raw edges showing on the long sides. Now bring back in that clear vinyl pocket, and we're going to apply this to the top long edge of that vinyl pocket. So you can just push up your vinyl pocket to meet that midpoint on the back of your strap where those raw edges are, and then you just fold it right over just like that. Now add some clips to hold it in place. You don't want this to be too loosey-goosey. So you want to really tuck in that edge of the vinyl right into the middle of your fabric. All right, let's go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew along the folded edge in towards the vinyl at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you have your silicone foot or your tape on the bottom of your presser foot while you do this because this vinyl can get sticky. If you find the bottom of the vinyl is sticking to the bed of your sewing machine, just grab one of your pattern pieces, tuck it underneath, far enough away so that you don't actually sew on the paper, but just enough so that it will cover the bottom of your vinyl and help it not stick. The nice thing about vinyl like this is that it doesn't have a right side and a wrong side. So just check your top stitching. If one side of your top stitching looks better than the other, just use that as the right side. I'm going to stick with that one as the right side of my pocket. So if you're using zipper tape like I am, go ahead and grab your zipper tape. And we want to make sure that it's a little bit longer than our pouch. So I'm just going to line it up over it and then trim it down. The zipper tape is probably about 11 and a half inches now. Then go ahead and add your zipper pull if you haven't already. So now we want to lay our zipper so that when it's closed, the zipper pulls on the left. So when it's open, the zipper pulls on the right, close this on the left, lay it right side up, and then you're gonna take that top fabric edge of your vinyl pocket and then line it right along the edge of those zipper teeth. To make this easier, I'm gonna use some double-sided tape. So I'm going to apply the double-sided tape to the wrong side of my zipper pocket, so just the back edge, right along the middle of that top strip on my clear vinyl pocket. And now I'm just going to line it up over my zipper. You want this to be as straight as possible right against those zipper teeth. They should just come right up to it, not quite touch it though. Okay, now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew on this top fabric edge at an eighth of an inch 
away from the zipper teeth. So it should just go right next to them. You're gonna wanna use your zipper foot here. So once you have that stitch in place, she suggests going over this one more time right along the middle of these two top stitch lines you have on this fabric strip just to really secure this in place. All right, this is where you should be. Go ahead and put this to the side for just a moment. Grab your remaining pattern piece number six and we're gonna fold this wrong sides together just like we did on the other side of the lining. And then if you'd like, you can grab your iron and press along this folded edge. So now we wanna attach this onto the other side of our zipper just like that. To make sure it's centered, I'm gonna go ahead and just line up the edges of my vinyl pocket, not my zipper tape, and then find the midpoint of my zipper, again, using the edges of my vinyl pocket. I'm just gonna mark a line on that edge. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the back of this top panel, marking a line along the midpoint. And then I can take that midpoint mark with the midpoint mark on my zipper and line them up to see exactly where they match up. Now, since I'm not using vinyl or anything, I can go ahead and just grab some pins and pin along this edge so it's nice and straight against that zipper. You could also use double-sided tape here if you'd like. She suggests basting this down with hand stitches. I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna crank up my stitch lengths to about six millimeters and baste this in place and we'll remove those stitches in just a moment. So once you have that basted on, go ahead and grab your remaining pattern piece number one lining and lay that right side up. And we're just gonna take our pocket piece and lay it right over that lining panel, matching up that curved edge that we just basted in place. You should find that your clear vinyl pocket panel extends over your lining panel. Let's go ahead and clip along this top curved edge first. So now open your zipper so that it's in between the edges of the lining panel. And now we're gonna sew along the edge of the lining panel at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So when I'm at the machine, I'm actually gonna have the vinyl side up just like this. And I'm just gonna look through that clear vinyl and stay an eighth of an inch away from that lining popcorn panel in the back. We're gonna sew all the way around the unit. Now that you have this entire unit basted in place, we can go back over those basting stitches and just sew along that edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, securing the zipper in place. Once you have the zipper on, you can go ahead and remove your basting stitches. So now all we have to do is trim down the excess around that lining. So I like to flip it so that the lining is wrong side up. And then I'm just gonna trim down my vinyl and my zipper tape so that it's all the same size as that lining panel. All right, isn't that fun? Now we got some green popcorn in here. That's cool, I like that. Okay, so now we need to install the magnets on this side of the bag. She suggests grabbing your other lining panel that has the female magnets and laying it right side down against the lining panel with a clear pocket, lining up all the sides as best you can, and then just pushing pretty hard on those magnets so that they create an indention on your fabric. I, I didn't have much luck with this, to be completely honest. You could try putting some chalk or grab any sort of marker that will wipe off that metal pretty easily. So just like this, this is just a fabric marker. And then just mark up the female end of your magnets and then do the same thing where you line up all the edges really well and then push down on those female magnets from behind. And then when you lift it up, you'll have these markings. Then you can just wipe off the marker from your female magnetic snaps. If you are struggling with this and you just cannot seem to get a mark from that female magnet to the side, don't stress out about it. Just grab the template and do the same thing. It might not be exact, but it will be pretty dang close. 
So now grab one of your washers and line it up with that mark that you just made so that we can mark in those ovals the placement for our male ends of our magnetic snaps. Just like before, grab your seam ripper, just very, very gently seam rip right along that line. Grab your two remaining one inch square Peltex pieces and mark the lines for the prongs of the male snaps. Seam rip those as well. Okay, so now grab your male snaps and insert those through the right side of your lining panel with the vinyl pocket. Take your Peltex scraps and put those over the prongs. You can glue these in place as well if you'd like. And then grab your washers and insert the washer over and pull the prongs apart. There we go. Now we can just check this real quick. Go ahead and line up those magnetic snaps and make sure all of your edges are matching up pretty well. That looks good to me. All right, there we go. Magnetic snaps are done. Go ahead and put these panels to the side for now. So now grab your pattern piece number three. This is gonna be the bottom of your bag and we're gonna be working with the lining side. Next, take your Velcro and we're gonna be working on the rough part of the Velcro. So cut off the required length of Velcro on the rough side. So you should have your rough piece of Velcro. What we're gonna do is we're gonna center this on the right side of the lining for the bottom panel. So what I like to do is just line up my ruler along the middle of the panel lengthwise. I'm gonna add some double-sided tape to the back of my Velcro. And if you're using this Dritz tape, this is perfectly fine to sew over. We're gonna be sewing over it just a little bit, but it shouldn't gunk up your needle at all. And now I'm just going to center my Velcro right over my ruler and try to make sure it looks centered on each side as well. This is really just a lot of eyeballing. It doesn't have to be perfect. So now that I have my Velcro taped on, I can take this to the sewing machine and sew it in place. I'm gonna sew around all four edges of the Velcro at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Then I'm gonna do like Vivi does in the pattern, I'm gonna do a zigzag, just rough zigzag through the whole thing just to keep it in place. This is pretty strong Velcro. So when your bag comes in and out of it, you don't want it to end up ripping your fabric. So give it a good stitch to secure it. All right, once you have that in place, you can go ahead and put this to the side. So now grab your exterior bottom piece. I'm using this beautiful vinyl and your bottom Peltex piece. Now she suggests that you center this on the back of your bottom panel, just like this, and then stitch along the long edges of the Peltex to hold it in place. I wanna caution you though, if you do that, these stitches will be seen in the bag in the end. So if you don't want these stitches to be seen, then I highly suggest grabbing some glue instead of sewing this in place. So that's what I'm gonna do this time. If you have a fabric bottom, then you can always seam rip those stitches out later so that you don't see them. But if you're using a vinyl bottom, you will see those stitches in the end. And if you seam rip them, you will have the holes from the needle. So this time I am going to hold it in place with glue. So I'm just gonna take this and center it on my panel, here we go. So I figure since I have purse feet, I might as well use them. So grab your pattern piece for number three. Now remember, this is totally optional. You don't have to add purse feet at all. And I poke little holes in the center of the purse feet markings and mark those holes on the back of your Peltex. And now take one of the washers for your purse feet, center it over that dot and mark your vertical lines using the washer. Now, just like before, use your seam ripper and very, very gently rip along those marked lines. Remember, a little bit of force goes a long way with this material. Now you can flip this so that it's right side up. Grab one of your purse feet, find the slits that you just made, stick the prongs through those slits, add your washer behind it, 
and then push the prongs open. And you can repeat this for the other three purse feet. All right, the bottom of your bag should now be ready to go. So now grab both of your bottom panels, the lining and the exterior, and we're going to place them wrong sides together, just like this, lining up all four edges, and then just clip along these edges to hold it in place. Okay, now let's sew along these four clipped edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have the exterior and lining pieces for the bottom attached, wrong sides together, we can put together the exterior of this bag. So grab your lining panel with that beautiful clear pocket and lay it right side up. Now grab your bottom panel and lay that so that it's lining side down against that clear pocket and line them up along that bottom straight edge. I'm gonna go ahead and clip this in place for now. Now grab your outer panel, so for me it's this beautiful design, and lay that right side down on top of the bottom panel and the lining panel. And add that to that bottom straight edge that you already clipped in place. So it should look just like this. I have my exterior panel, my bottom panel with the purse feet facing up towards that outer panel, and then my lining panel with the clear pocket up. So now we're gonna sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have that straight edge sewn together, you can actually pull the exterior and the lining pieces so that they're wrong sides together. Line up those top curved edges first and just start clipping this in place. So you should have a nice firm exterior panel now. Okay, so now we can go back to the sewing machine and just sew along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. We're just holding it all in place right now. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing on the other side now. So grab your remaining lining panel. This has the brush flap and pockets. Lay it right side up. Take your bottom lining panel and lay that right side down and line up against that bottom straight edge and then clip that in place first. Next, grab your remaining exterior panel and lay it right side down against the right side of the exterior of the bottom panel. And then just include that in your clips. All right, let's go to the sewing machine and sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Just like before, pull back the exterior and the lining panels so that they are wrong sides together. And then just match up those top curved edges and pin those in place. And then you can clip along the sides as well. Let's take this to the sewing machine and sew along this clipped edge all the way around this exterior and lining panel sandwich at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, once you have that sewn on, now you just clip your magnets together and just hope that it all lined up well. And it did, you should be good. This is gonna be so cute. This is an exciting part. All right, so, this is what I consider to be the hardest part, is done. Very cool. Now we need to make the binding and attach that to this bag. So let's go ahead and put this to the side. So let's make some binding. I used a fat quarter on the previous bag for binding. You could also use a half yard. Just use what you have. So I'm gonna open up my half a yard and lay it wrong side up. I have my bottom right corner, which I'm going to fold diagonally across just like this. So you can see now I have this nice 45 degree angle on my fabric. What I wanna do is cut a line right along this vertical edge so that I have a nice square piece of fabric and I can trim my strips on the bias. You want this to be trimmed on the bias because we have that rounded edge on our bag and it's gonna help the fabric stretch just enough so you don't have any little pleats or clumps. So I've just got my 24 inch ruler and a rotary cutter and I'm just gonna cut right along that vertical edge. So now you should have this giant triangle. Go ahead and fold it in half again so that you have the two folded sides along one edge just like that. So now we just have a smaller triangle. I'm gonna grab my large ruler again, kind of flatten out that longer edge. 
I'm going to line up one of my grid marks along the bottom fold and I'm just going to leave about an eighth of an inch or so overhang. What I want to do is just trim down this edge. You could also just take some scissors and trim it down, but to get a really nice clean cut, I just kind of shave off the edge just like that. Now we're going to cut two and a half inch wide strips. So I'm going to line up my long ruler and the two and a half inch mark along that longest edge on the right over here. I also like to make sure I line up a grid line on the very bottom edge, on that folded edge, just to make sure my strips are staying even. And then I'll just grab my rotary cutter and slice along the left side, move that out of the way, and just continue going down. Okay, I think three of these strips will be enough. So now with my diagonal edges, what I like to do is first line up my binding how I want it to go in the end so I have an idea of how it's supposed to come together. So in the end, these two should be like this to create one straight strip. So rotate this right side down and you wanna let the bottom right corner overhang about a quarter of an inch. So you can use the grid marks on your cutting mat or just eyeball it, but it should overhang on both edges, those corners should overhang. They shouldn't be exactly matched up. And then just pin it in place. And then I just go down my strip and continue doing this. So once I get to the end, I'll just grab another strip of binding, line it up like I want it to be when it's finished, fold it together, give it about a quarter of an inch overhang. And I'm gonna attach all six of my strips like this. So now we can take this to the sewing machine and sew along these pinned edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. I suggest you sew one first and then open it up to make sure you really got that seam allowance correct. It's okay if it's a little off, but you don't want it to be like a, a lot off. Once you have all your strips sewn together, you can go ahead and just trim down those little dog ears off the corner. So let's first go through and press our seams open, and then we'll press the whole strip in half. So I press it once when it's folded, and then I finger press it, and then I press that seam again as it's open. Once you have the seams pressed, all we have to do is fold this in half with the long edges, wrong sides together, and just press along your entire strip of binding. Try to make sure you're not tugging on it too much. Remember, we cut this on the bias, so if you pull on it, it will, it will stretch quite a bit, and we don't want it to stretch just yet. We wanna wait until we need it to stretch. So just press along the entire edge of this strip. If you have your diagonal ends like I do. We can go ahead and trim that down so that we can match up with the pattern now. So I'm just going to cut off that diagonal end. What you'll want to do is to open it up so that it's wrong side up, take that bottom left corner, fold it up so that the edge goes against that top edge, press this 45 degree angle down, and then press the entire strip back in half so you have this little triangle on the end. This will just secure the other end in place once we sew this on. So your folded edge should now look just like this. Grab your outer shell of your bag and lay it so that you have the lining side up. Take that folded edge, we're gonna pin it right in the center of the bottom panel. So I'm just gonna use clips for this. So the first thing we're gonna do is open up our binding and just sew along this edge right here where you see the right side of the binding on this triangle. We just wanna stitch this part down first. So sew this on at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once you have this edge sewn on, go ahead and refold your binding down and clip it in place. We're gonna leave about three inches from the edge of this fold open so that we can enclose the other end when we're done. So I'm just gonna use the grid lines on my mat and count one, two, three, over. So where this clip is is where I'll start sewing. So now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and sew this binding on around the entire unit at 3 8 inch seam allowance. We're gonna stop when we're about two inches away from this edge right here. Go ahead and add a clip 
to help you remember that. I do suggest using a zipper foot because with the 3 8 inch seam allowance, we get pretty close to these snaps and these can kind of throw off your presser foot and make your seams a little wonky. So using a zipper foot is going to help you get closer to those when you need to. Once you have the binding attached, this is how it should look. You want to let this binding here overlap your previously stitched on binding by about four inches. Really just needs to go to it's about where the stitches begin on the bottom left here. Just cut it down to size. I like to clip down this flap as I go down the edge. Open up that unsewn edge on the very beginning and just tuck in this extra bit on the end just like that and then just use clips to really help you keep everything in place neatly so this is now what it should look like you just have this unsewn edge right here everything clipped in place the raw ends are hidden inside of one another let's go back to the sewing machine and just continue the stitch all the way to the very beginning stitches at a 3 8 inch seam allowance so I'm going to save hand sewing this until the very end of the tutorial because I like to be done with my sewing room before I go sit down and hand stitch this on. But let's prep it for hand stitching now. So what you want to do is wrap this folded edge around that seam and over making sure it covers all of the stitches. If you're having a hard time doing that because these are some very thick seams, we can actually trim down this seam allowance just a bit. So what I do is I actually move the binding out of the way. I don't really want to trim down my binding, but I'm just going to go around the bag and trim down about an eighth of an inch seam allowance just to make it easier for me to wrap the binding around. Another thing you could do is when you're attaching the binding, you can attach it on at a quarter inch seam allowance instead of three eighths of an inch. And that would give you a better result. Okay, once we have that trimmed down, we can try wrapping this again. And you should find it a little bit easier to get it all the way around those stitches. Grab your clips and just clip this in place. So wrap it and clip it in place. So once you have the binding clipped on, you have a pretty good idea of what your bag is going to look like. Now I'm going to save the hand stitching for the very end. So I'm going to put this to the side and we'll revisit it after we build the middle pouch of this bag. So now let's work on that center pouch. Grab pattern piece number seven and lay it wrong side up, fold it in half, wrong sides together, matching up those shorter edges, and then press along that crease. We're just finding the midpoint. And then take those shorter raw edges and fold them wrong sides together up to meet that crease. Do this for both sides and then fold the whole unit together. Now we're going to go to the sewing machine and sew along these two long folded edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have those two long edges top stitched, go ahead and fold those short edges to meet one another. Now, if you want to attach this to your bag just like this and then use a key ring to attach it later, go ahead and leave it like this. This is what the pattern suggests. However, if you'd like, now is the time to add a D ring. So I'm using a three quarter inch D ring here. And what you can do is just wrap this tab around the flat part of the D ring, clip in place, and then sew along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Grab one of your outer panels for pattern piece number two. And we're going to attach this strap three quarters of an inch down from the top. So the easiest way to do this is just to grab a ruler, measure three quarters of an inch down, and then just clip this in place. Now we're going to go to the sewing machine and just sew this on to this exterior panel at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, once you have that attached, you can go ahead and put this to the side. Grab your remaining zipper if you're using zipper tape like I am. Let's go ahead and add that zipper pull to it. 
So I'm going to move my zipper pull close to the end and then just open up the end just like that. So I have my open end when I open it, when I close it, it closes. I'm going to measure one inch down on each side of my zipper tape and make a mark right in the seam allowance. Now pinch right where that mark is so that you have the back of the zipper pulls wrong sides together and the zipper teeth should just angle up at a 90 degree angle. Go ahead and pinch that in place, put a clip on it to hold it. Do the same on the other side. Now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna sew along this fold just to hold it in place. So once you have those stitched down, you should see that when you try to close your zipper, it won't go flying off. This is just a really nice way to finish the zipper. We're gonna put a zipper tab on the other end. So in the pattern, she tells you exactly how far to measure from the end of the zipper teeth right before they angle off. Go ahead and measure that off and then trim your zipper to the suggested size. Grab your zipper tab, which is pattern piece number eight. We're gonna press our zipper tab the same way we have been. So lay it wrong side up and fold two edges to meet wrong sides together and press along that midpoint mark. Open it back up, press those raw edges up to meet that midpoint mark. Now open up your press zipper tab and then just push the end of your zipper into the tab so that it wraps tightly around that raw edge. You can clip it down to hold it in place. We can take this to the sewing machine now and sew along the folded edge in towards the zipper at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, your zipper is ready to be installed now. Grab one of your lining pieces for pattern piece number two and lay it right side up. What I like to do is find the midpoints of these first. So I'm just gonna fold that top edge and then pinch the midpoint. And then I'm just gonna make the tiniest little snip just like that so I have this nice little arrow. I'm gonna do the same thing with my zipper. So now take your zipper and lay it right side up with the zipper when closed on the right side line up those midpoint marks between the right side of your lining panel and the right side of your zipper. You're both pointing up. Clip that midpoint mark first and then continue to clip the rest of the zipper in place along that top edge of your lining panel. Now grab your outer panel that has that little key ring attachment and lay that right side down, lining it up with that same top edge and then you can go ahead and just include it in the clips. You should have a nice little zipper sandwich now. I like to move my zipper pull into the middle just to make it a little bit easier to sew this all together. Okay, now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you're using a zipper foot here. Once you have these sewn together, you can trim down that zipper tape and the zipper end. Now pull your lining and exterior panels so that there are wrong sides together. I like to line them up on the bottom first and then I'll just kind of tug on the zipper to flatten it out and get it nice and straight up here. And then from whatever side doesn't have vinyl on it, press down on that side. Okay, so now we're gonna go top stitch along this pressed edge by the zipper only top stitch where there's zipper tape. Don't top stitch these edges over here. Just leave those alone. All right, once you have one side attached, we're just gonna do the same thing on the other side. So grab your remaining lining panel and let's go ahead and find the midpoint of this one as well. Lay your zipper tape so that it's right side up against the right side of your lining panel and clip the midpoint first and then clip out to the edges. Now grab the exterior panel, this is pattern piece number two, and lay it right side down, just lining it up right along the edge of that lining panel and include it in those clips. There we go. Now let's take this to the sewing machine and sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have it sewn on, let's trim down the zipper tape and the zipper tab. Now let's pull the lining panel and exterior panel out so they're wrong sides together. And then tug along the zipper tape so that you can get it nice and straight. If you, if you tug it 
correctly, your zipper tape should be pretty straight. And that's the goal. Straight tape. Now let's sew along the right side of the zipper tape on the exterior fabric at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Remember, we're not stitching all the way off the edge. We're only gonna do our top stitching where the zipper tape is. So this should be where you're at. The zipper is applied in the middle. Now we're just gonna sew along the bottom edge of the exterior fabrics before applying our Velcro. So just pull your exterior fabrics right side together and we're only worried about this bottom straight edge. Go ahead and clip these together. Now we're gonna sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have that stitched in place, we're going to open this up. So unzip your zipper all the way and you want your lining to be right side up, the wrong side of your zipper. And this will allow us to see the right side of the bottom of that seam we just sewed. Grab your eight inch strip of Velcro. This is the fuzzy side this time. And let's add some double-sided tape running along the center of it on the back. And we're gonna stick this piece of Velcro on the center of this seam that we just sewed. So this is a little tricky because with that zipper, it doesn't really wanna move out of the way. You just have to kind of eyeball it and center it as best you can. So just stick it on to that center seam. If it's giving you some trouble, you can always take some pins and just pin it to help hold it in place. Once we get it to the machine, it'll be a lot easier to keep it all together. So the goal here is that it's just pretty much straight along that seam, mostly centered. You can measure if you need to on each side to make sure it's the same amount and shift it as you want. Okay, now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along all four edges of our Velcro at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. We're then going to zigzag across just like we did on the other Velcro strip, just to keep it in place and make sure the fabric doesn't rip when we're pulling it out of our bag. Once you have that Velcro strip attached, now we can just finish up the bag. So pull your lining panels right side together and your exterior panels right side together. And we're just gonna clip along all of the edges just to hold everything in place. And then we'll discuss where we're sewing. Make sure you align those side seams perfectly. We don't want those to be off in any way. Okay, so first things first, on the bottom of the lining panel, go ahead and mark a seven and a half inch opening for turning later. Make sure it's in the middle so you can sew the ends. We're gonna backstitch well at each point. So now we're gonna sew along the clipped edges. We're not going to sew in our squared off corners on the lining or the exterior. We're just gonna sew along the sides and then we're gonna sew along the bottom of the lining, leaving that opening in place. Make sure at the beginning and end of every seam, you backstitch well. We're gonna sew this at a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm actually gonna use my zipper foot because I have that D-ring in place right here with my tab. So I wanna get as close to that as possible without having any wonky stitches. If you're not using a D-ring, you don't need to use a zipper foot here. when I was at the sewing machine, I did backstitch pretty well over the keyring strap since that could get a little bit more use than other stitches. So now we just need to close up these box corners. Make sure your zipper is open. You should be able to still reach your hand in there and open your zipper if it's not already open. So what you wanna do is pull the corners of your bottom corners, lining up those middle seams. And I like to just kind of Fold the seams in an opposite direction. You can go ahead and clip these together. The goal here is to get this as straight as possible. If you get this seam straight, then you'll have a nice flat bottom. However, because of the angle, 
it's actually very difficult to get this straight. So I'm more focused on lining up these edges. So do this for all four corners. Okay, now we're gonna sew along all four clipped edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch well at the beginning and ends of these. So once you have your corners sewn, you can trim them down just a little bit to keep the seams even. Now turn the bag right side out through that hole that you left. So you can see that the corners are just a little rounded. See how it's not straight, it kind of rounds up. That's because of our seams. It's really not that big of a deal. Now just fold down the open raw edges from your opening. And this doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a perfect quarter inch seam here. It can be a little bit more. And then just clip along that folded edge. So now we can take this to the sewing machine and just sew along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have that edge sewn shut, you can just push your lining into the bag. And there you go. This is the pouch on the inside of the bag and it is complete. Now all we have to do is make the wristlet. So I'm going to show you two different ways to make a wristlet today. I'm going to show you the way she does it in the pattern first and then I'll show you an alternative. Use either one based on what you have. So take your pattern piece 11, for me that's vinyl, and mark a midpoint line running along the longer edge. Now fold up your vinyl, wrong sides together, matching your long edge with that midpoint line. And I'm just gonna use clips to clip this in place. If you have a fabric strap, you can use your iron and press this. Do the same on the other side. Now fold up these two clipped edges to meet with the raw edges tucked inside. And this should give you a nice seamless strap. Now let's take this to the sewing machine and sew along both folded edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, as you can see, this vinyl is super sticky, so I'm not going to use this vinyl for the other key fob. So take your strap after you have it top stitched and fold it in half with the short edges matching. Grab your key fob hardware, and it looks like this. It's got these little clamps on the end. And just wrap that around the end of your strap. You should have some key fob plier tools, and you just push it over the edge of the key fob holder and squish it really tight into that vinyl. There you go. So this is what it ends up looking like. It's a pretty clean look. And then you can grab a key ring and attach that to your key fob. And then you can attach this to your D ring, which is a nice look and it's nice because you can easily take this off and change it out. Let's try one more way of making a strap using a swivel hook. Okay, for the alternative strap, I have a piece of vinyl here that is not that sticky. It is 12 inches by three inches. And then I have a three quarters of an inch swivel hook. I'm gonna mark a midpoint line that runs one and a half inch between the two long edges. And just like we did with the previous strap, I'm going to fold those long edges up to meet that midpoint line. And once again, fold your clipped edges up to meet so that the raw edges are tucked into the center. And now we're gonna go top stitch along both long edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, once you have both sides top stitched, take your swivel hook and place it onto your strap. So make sure your swivel hook is pointing in towards the center of the strap. Pull your short raw edges together. And now we're gonna sew along this edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. So after you have the end sewn together, flip your strap so that the swivel hook is pointing out towards the exterior of the strap, slide your swivel hook right into that seam that we just sewed. And now using a zipper foot, we're just gonna sew right next to the edge of our swivel hook, closing up that seam, hiding those raw edges, and holding that swivel hook in place. And there you go, that is just a quick little wrist strap. This is especially good if this is for a child because it's a bit smaller. You can just clip this on to your bag 
and you're done with the center part of the bag. Now we just need to finish up the binding. So when you're done with your handle and your middle zip pouch, you can see you can just line up the Velcro on the bottom of your pouch with the Velcro in the center of your casing, and it will sit in there just like that. Go ahead and remove that center pouch. And now let's talk about the binding. You can see we already sewed the binding on the interior. We have to hand sew the binding on the exterior. Now, you can machine sew this on. I am not talented enough to show you how to do that neatly and cleanly. So I'm gonna put a couple of links down in the description of the video for other YouTube videos where they show you how to machine bind. They're gonna be doing it on quilts, but it's the same process for the most part. You just don't have any weird corners to work with, so it should actually be easier. But I am gonna show you how to do it by hand because in my opinion, hand binding is one of the most therapeutic activities. So first you're going to need your case with the binding clipped all the way around, just like we did previously. And these are the main tools I use when hand binding. So this is just one of those fun little sewing pouches we made. I'll have a link for the video for this. This is just a great way to store your needles in your clips while you're working. So you can take this to the couch and just relax while you do your binding. I like to use leather thimbles. I always put my leather thimble on my right hand middle finger. I am right handed. And when I push that needle through thicker fabric, I like to use my middle finger, just the tip of it to push the needle. This is gonna protect you. You definitely need to be wearing something on your hand. So they have stick-on leather thimbles, they have metal thimbles, but definitely have something to protect your finger. I'm really not picky when it comes to needles when I'm doing hand stitching. I like to use these Clover Gold Eye embroidery needles. I'll just use a smaller one on the outskirts, something that's easy to thread, but that's small enough to get really close stitches. For my thread today, I'll be using this Guterman polyester thread. I use a thinner thread when I'm putting on the binding. You're more than welcome to use the same thread that you used in your sewing machine. I picked this blue one because it matches my binding a little bit better. And then I always have a small pair of scissors to help clip the thread while I'm working on it. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is pull off some thread. I'm probably pulling off about 30 inches. Now, like I said, I'm gonna grab one of my needles. I like to get needles that have a nice big eye hole so I don't have to use any other tools to thread it. So then I'm going to push the thread through that eye hole and then pull both of the ends of the thread up to meet one another. Once I have the threads in the same place, I'm going to pinch that end and then gently pull on my thread so that the needle's on the opposite end. So now I'm going to knot off this end. So what I do is I hold my needle with the point facing towards the opposite end of the thread, so the loose end over here, and I pinch it on the end. I'm then going to pinch the end of the thread onto the needle with my right pointer finger, wrap it around the needle three or four times, just like this, and then using my pointer finger that's holding that thread down and my thumb, I'm going to pull those wraps that are on the needle all the way down the thread to the end, making this nice small knot. I know it seems like I, what? I've tried to show people how to do this in person. If you haven't done it before, it can seem a little complicated. Just give it a shot. Once you have the feel for it, it's much easier. All right, now I'm gonna grab my leather thimble. I put that on my middle finger. And now grab your outer panel. You can really start wherever you'd like. One of the things I like most about hand binding is that I have complete control over where this binding goes. So you can see in some spots, the binding is very close to those stitches, but I can pull it just enough over so that we don't end up seeing those stitches. When I'm at the sewing machine, I don't feel like I have that much control and I end up with not the straightest lines. So take your needle, poke it into that exterior fabric underneath your binding and then push it through your binding into that crease of your binding, just like this. We're just starting it off, so don't stress too much about where the binding is yet. It's not really attached to anything. So then now I'm going to roll my binding down to exactly where I want it to be, and you shouldn't be fighting with this at all. Since you have all these clips here, those should be holding it all in place. And so you can see where the thread is coming out in the binding. I'm gonna be working from the right to the left, so I'm going left. So I'm actually gonna put my needle into the exterior panel, not the binding, behind where it's coming out in the binding. So my stitch is gonna go behind, and then it's gonna go up under the fabric 
into that crease of the binding, just like this, and I'm going to push it out and pull it. This is going to create an invisible stitch. You want these to be fairly close together, maybe about a quarter of an inch. So once again, I'm going to go behind where the stitch comes out, push it into that exterior fabric. And I'm not going through any of the interfacing, any of the, you know, Peltex, nothing like that. We're just going through the fabric. And then I'm going to gently work the needle to come out from the binding. So I'm pushing it into the fabric, up behind the binding, working it so it comes out of the edge of the binding. And then I'm just going to gently pull it closed like that. And I'm going to continue this around the entire bag. Like I said, this is a good activity for you to do on the couch or in bed or in a comfortable chair. So I want to show you how it works on the vinyl. I, I honestly don't have any problem at all working on the vinyl. I'm going to do it the exact same way I do it on the cotton. Just going from behind. When I get to these seams right here where we kind of have like a bump coming from the interfacing in the vinyl, I do like to add a couple kind of closer stitches right here just so our thread doesn't pull too much. So I pay a little bit more attention here to try to really make sure there's a nice tight stitch on the binding just at that bump. And then again, it'll just go into the vinyl. This is where your leather thimble is going to come in handy too, because sometimes the vinyl can be a little bit tougher. So you have to push a little bit harder on your needle. And every now and then you should just kind of pull on your thread gently to untwist your needle. You'll find that sometimes the thread starts twisting around and that can cause knots. And again, if you have some spots where you just cannot get that binding to pull over the stitches to hide them, you are more than welcome to grab some scissors and still just to shave off a little bit of the edge of the outer panel, not the binding, but just the outer panel and interfacing so that it's a little bit thinner so you can wrap that binding around. And then again, when I get to this really thick seam over here where we go from the vinyl bottom to that Peltex foam outer panel, I'm just going to make my stitches a little bit smaller so we don't have the thread pulling too much. And then we just continue on to the other panel, going all the way around. And you can see so far, as we're attaching the binding, it's pretty much an invisible stitch. You really don't see any of the thread or the stitches, which is, which is what I like, because you have it on both sides. On both sides of the unit, you don't see any stitching. When my thread is about three inches long, I decide I'm going to tie off and start a new thread. To do that, I lift up the binding that's going in the direction I'm going. I insert my needle into the outer fabric that's underneath the binding and just slide it through just like that. Give it a nice close tug. I'll then insert it again into the same place. Pull it through, but not all the way. Take the end with the thread coming in and stick that through that loop that I have. I'm just knotting it here. Give it a nice firm tug, but not too tight. You don't want it to break. And then I'll insert it back into that outer panel in the fabric behind the binding, push it away from the binding and out. So I'm knotting off the end here and then I'm burying the tail in the fabric. This will help prevent anything from ripping. I'll then trim it off. And then I can just hold my needle in my needle pouch, grab my thread and cut off another 30 inch long piece of thread and do it all over again. Okay, this time when I insert my needle, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. Make sure you have enough slack in your binding so you can open it up. I'm going to insert my needle so that it's pointing towards the binding I already have sewn on I'm going to insert it into the outer panel fabric underneath the binding, and I'm going to push it into the binding I've already sewn right in that edge. So see the needle is now coming out from the binding edge that I've already sewn in place. And then I'm just gonna pull the thread so that the knot goes underneath the binding and we can just hide it in there. And now I'm just gonna continue on. So once again, I'm gonna go to the right, which is behind the thread where it's coming out. Insert it into the outer fabric, push it forward. So now it will come out in front of the thread, but this time through that edge in the binding, and then just gently pull on it. 
and I'll just continue sewing this around the entire bag. So here is where I'm at. As you can see, I did most of the binding off camera. I only have the small opening left, so I wanted to show you how I close this up. So I'm gonna continue binding right up until I get to those beginning stitches. If you have any kind of a wonky seam right here because of those first stitches, you can actually just go over it again and kind of pull down the binding to flatten it out. There we go. Okay, so I just go over those first stitches just about an inch or so. And then what I do is I insert my needle underneath the binding into the outer panel underneath it, just trying to catch some of the fabric, just like that. So I just caught some of the outer fabric that's right underneath that binding. I'm going to pull it shut once. I'm going to do it again, but this time I'm also catching that previous thread that I just used that stitch for. And now I'm going to loop my needle through that loop before I pull it nice and tight, not too tight so that it rips or anything. And then I'm going to insert my needle into the binding right where that knot is, push it out the other end of the binding and tug it nice and tight. And now you can see the knot is invisible, has disappeared. You can clip off your thread and then just work it with your finger. And there you go. This looks so stinking cute. So here is our finished bag. And I just wanna kinda of show you how I used it for crafts. If I open it up, I've got my center pouch right here. I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. You can put a lot in this center pouch. On the left over here, I have a pad of paper for notes. And on the right, I actually have a pen, some coloring pencils, and some markers. So this is such a fun little craft bag. It can be a travel bag. Obviously, this is an amazing beauty bag, but you could use this in so many different ways. I cannot wait to see what you guys do with this pattern. Okay, what do you think? How did you do? Did you survive the binding? I know you survived the rest of the bag. The rest of the bag wasn't that bad, but the binding. How did the binding go? Do you want to see mine? Oh my gosh. Okay, so we all know this is backstitch fabrics. Look, look at that. I love that this time we used panels on the outside of the bag and we used a totally different fabric for the inside pouch. It really gives this whole bag such an amazing look. And like I showed you guys in the top down, I filled this up with craft supplies. So here's the pouch in the middle. I'm gonna just take that out. And then here we go. We have our, like, we like green popcorn in this house. So we have our green popcorn over here with our little notepad. And then we just got our pen, colored pencils, markers, all of our fun craft supplies. You can fill this up with erasers and slime. I don't know, you know, whatever the kids are wanting these days. So this is beyond a huge hit. Beyond a huge, I mean, you will not find anything like this out and about. This is such a unique, beautiful design. And I, I'm seriously just sitting here thinking of all the different types of fabrics and panels and uses I have for these bags. I can honestly see myself making a bunch more of these. Like I said, I don't think they're that challenging. I would get them all done and then just have a little stack all ready to hand bind, just park it on the couch, watch a movie, and just bust out some hand binding. These are beautiful bags. So I am so excited to see you make these. I, I really, really want you to give it a try. I know it, even with the tutorial, it's still like, I don't know. Do it, just try it. You're gonna love it. You know somebody who will use this. If you yourself don't see yourself using this, you know someone who would love something like this. This would be a, such a great gift. You know, Christmas, it is July and in my house we start celebrating Christmas in July, don't judge. But Christmas is right around the corner. For us custom makers, it is. Christmas is right around the corner. We can get started now on our Christmas gifts. This would be a magical Christmas gift. Such a good gift. Mm. Just look at it. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that binding. Look at that binding. Doesn't that just pop? Oh, man, it's a satisfying make. It's just. You feel good. <laughs> you feel real good after you make it. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's tutorial. I hope that this inspired you to go make some of these bags. Again, I'm so excited to see what you do with them. I have so many links down in the description of this video for the pattern, 
for other videos. Like I said, if you have any suggestions for tutorials showing you how to machine bind, especially machine bind on bags, please leave them in the comment section down below. There's a lot of tutorials out there for machine binding quilts, but it's just a little bit different with bags because it's thicker. We, we just, we have a little bit more, we don't have quite as much wiggle room when it comes to the binding as you do with a quilt. And if you've made quilts and you've made this, you'll understand what I'm saying. So if you have any other resources, as always, please leave them down in the comment section. We all appreciate that. Thank you again, Vivi, so much for allowing me to fill these tutorials. You know how much I love these bags. I hope you all have a great rest of the week. Get out there and make something. Bye.